Skin cancer is the abnormal growth of cells of the skin that continue to divide and do not stop dividing. Any growth on your skin that changes in shape, size, color, or new growth on your skin. A growth that becomes itchy, that has pain or tenderness, or if the surface becomes scaly, what starts to bleed or ulcerate, and many times people will come to me to tell me I have a new growth in my skin that's bleeding, and they think it was just a little scrape on the skin, it ends up being a skin cancer that all of a sudden starts to bleed and change. But in adults, any new growth, especially over age 50, is of utmost importance to evaluate. The three main types of skin cancer are basal cell cancer, squamous cell cancer, and malignant melanoma. One out of five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime. Basal cancer is the least serious of the skin cancers and rarely metastasized, which means spread to other parts of the body. Basal cell cancers, when they develop, they start as a basal cell and they end as a basal cell. Squamous cell cancers often develop as a precancerous lesion, go into an insight to which is an early phase, and then they could develop into an invasive squamous cell cancer. And malignant melanomas start as a change in growth and they start as a melanoma. Anyone can get skin cancer at any age, but skin cancer is based on the cumulative ultraviolet radiation exposure that someone has. So a younger person will not have had the long-term cumulative exposure than an older person will. That's why we see more skin cancers in an older population. For the younger population, people that have a history of blistering sunburns or freckles or light a hair, naturally light hair like blonde or red or blue or green eyes will have an increased risk of developing a skin cancer in their lifetime. If they have a family history of a skin cancer, then they are at increased risk also of developing a skin cancer in their lifetime. The practices that contribute to skin cancer are primarily long-term exposure to ultraviolet radiation, such as going to the beach or sun tanning salons. The risk of skin cancer can be reduced by um, by a safe sun and what I, what I mean by that is I want my patients and people to enjoy the sun when it's a nice day we all enjoy going outside we're not happy when it rains however we all have to realize on a cloudy day 70% of ultraviolet radiation will transmit will go through the clouds and end up on our skin. It could also bounce off snow, could bounce off pa pavement, so you're getting actually twice as many ray ultraviolet rays um, as you normally when would. When I lecture children, I use the ABCs, which means A, stay away from the sun in the middle of the day between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. B means wear a sunblock, and we usually recommend a sunscreen with an SPF rating of 30 or greater. And C means cover up, wear a hat with a two inch brim so it covers your forehead, the neck and the ears, not just a baseball cap. Wear sunglasses. Sun tanning salons do lead to premature aging in the form of wrinkles, brown spots, skin laxity. And eventually you may get precancerous lesions and then develop a skin cancer. The the radiation that's transmitted by sun tanning salons is a UVA radiation, which is a deep tanning rays, although we know that um, all rays can damage the skin. There's, there are cases where people have gone to multiple tanning salons in a day looking to tan for a prom, and the tanning salon does not ask them if they've gone to another tanning salon that day. They've gone to multiple and they end up with severe burns in emergency rooms and hospitalized. There is something called the International Agency for Research on cancer, which is part of the World Health Organization, which lists tanning salons as a group one device, the same as plutonium and cigarettes, meaning it's a potent carcinogen and, and a cancer-causing agent. Of interest is that the FDA lists tanning salons in the same category as Band-Aids and tongue depressors. There is 74% of people who attend tanning salons at increased risk for melanoma. And those who also attend tanning salons are 2.5 times increased risk for developing a squamous cell cancer and a 1.5 times risk of developing a basal cell cancer. For those who need to tan and need to feel that their skin has um, color without having the dangers of a tanning salon, they can obtain a spray tan or many of the companies are now selling creams or lotions that actually will uh, la that layer the skin and will um, cause the skin to bronze and look like a tan and with time it does wash off. So those are much safer than going to a tanning salon 